Uh, okay, today we are going to discuss uh, the Tanzatz method. <coughs> and just to begin, <coughs> let me recall. Uh, uh, let me recall uh, main formula of our construction. Uh, uh, from <coughs> from RTT relations, we we defined uh, the monodromy matrix T, which was a product of uh, uh, quantum lux matrices. Quantum lux matrices. acting on some Hilbert space. We'll write it in a minute. And so here we have the zero uh, uh, component of space uh, is the one where this matrix is written. And uh, these numbers uh, the numbers of tensor components in the Hilbert space where, uh, where, this, where the, the corresponding operators uh, act. Uh, so let me, let me write more explicitly. L i of z. Uh, we, so we discussed two by two case. <coughs> and uh, this quantum lux matrix is just uh, H, okay, Z of Z minus Z I, uh, E one one in the if component, then here we put E two one in the if component, uh, here we have E12 in the if component, and finally here, 1 plus h over this difference multiplied by E22 in the if component. This is our <coughs> Lux matrix, and let us <coughs> let us denote it in, yeah, in so uh, these operators these operators act on the Hilbert space, uh, which is just C2 by C2 and so on, and times. So the, this, these operators uh, act on the eth component of this tensor product. <coughs> and let us, let us denote it as this, this lax operator in, in the general um, in general notation, like alpha, beta, uh, gamma, and delta. So this is a set of some operators because uh, what is written here is just a concrete realization. I mean, this is a concrete Lux matrix, uh, uh, and it can be. Uh, it can be different in some in some different model or in some different normalization. Uh, this is why I just put here some some uh, abstract notations. <coughs> but uh, so uh, what we want we we want to uh, so uh, our main main idea was that if we have this matrix. Uh, and we denote this, this, this matrix T as A of Z, B of Z, C of Z, and D of Z. Then we know that uh, the transfer matrices, which are, are just traces, traces of monodromy matrix in the zeroth component, so it's uh, A plus D. <coughs> what, 
what we know is that they commute with each other when they even when they depend uh, uh, on different on, on different spectral parameters. So this is this is what we already discussed, uh, and so our <coughs> our our task our task is to solve equation Schrodinger equation. Uh, let us write it like T of Z, okay, and we denote the the eigenvalue by tau. <coughs> and uh, these eigenvectors uh, are independent of spectral parameters because this T of Z commute would itself be taken uh, a different value of spectral parameters. So uh, they, they, they have common uh, eigenvectors, this T of Z and T of W. And since this Z and W are ar arbitrary, uh, then it means that this, this Psi should be independent of spectral parameter. So this is what we expect. Uh, and uh, we are going to, <coughs> to show how this, uh, how it may be obtained. <coughs> For this purpose, we need, uh, we need to introduce first uh, a vacuum vector. Vacuum vector. So we, We will make a certain substitution uh, for this psi, which is in fact called the beta and thus. Uh, and for this purpose, we need to uh, uh, to make some preparations. So first, introduce the vacuum vector, which is zero and which is just a product of uh, of all of all one zero vectors in each component. Uh, and let us let us uh, let us define the action of all these operators which we introduced here uh, by by the vacuum vector. So first, <coughs> let us compute, for example, how alpha i of z acts on on this on this vacuum vector. Uh, if we assume this concrete form for this alpha, then we see uh, that uh, so this E11 acts E11 uh, acts to one zero is equal to just one zero, yes, because this is this is this one matrix. <coughs> so what we have. Uh, is just this coefficient multiplied by vacuum vector again. And we will call this again alpha i of z, but without hat. So with the hat, it, it is an operator, and without hat, it is an eigenvalue. Uh, in the same way, we may easily see that the delta operator acts on the vacuum vector in the same way because uh, E22 two two, uh, E22 two two. just a second E to two acts on this uh, uh, vector by zero, but it has also <coughs> it has also this this one. So uh, this delta i of z acting on the vacuum vector gives just again a vacuum vector. But anyhow, we, since so th this eigenvalue is equal to one uh, in this realization, but we put also here some some arbitrary coefficient delta i 
of z because as I told you uh, this concrete form uh, is not unique and so this is what we have for the action of alpha and delta and finally we also need uh, a very important relation that gamma gamma hat acts by zero so this is this gamma is an equation operator it this happens because this this gamma <coughs> is E12 and E12 of course acts uh, acts by zero so this is a this is a list of of rules how this this operator acts and now we would like to to formulate the statement on how uh, this operator A, B, C, D acts uh, on the vacuum vector. So how beta and beta, beta acts somehow. We, we just don't discuss it at, at the moment, but we'll, we'll discuss it uh, maybe in a few minutes. <coughs> so beta acts somehow. Beta acts because uh, what, what beta makes uh, when you when you act by uh, e two one on this one zero, then then it is it is as follows. Yes, and so this beta vector uh, generates uh, 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 generates some excitation uh, at, at some place. I mean. Uh, uh, if you have in the vacuum vectors all spins up, then the, the action of beta makes one of spins down. This is what, what is written here. Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, now let me formulate a very important statement. The statement is the following. <coughs> uh, let it be like theorem. Uh, the, the action of this ABCD on, on the vacuum vector are given by the following rules. A of U acts on vacuum by some multiplication by some function. A small of u is just a, some function which will, which will be defined. Uh, the same for d. Uh, this C operator uh, acts by zero. And the action of B uh, on vacuum generates all Gilbert space. So uh, it means that the action of uh, B on the vacuum vector provides some linear combination of, uh, of all basis vectors uh, in the Hilker space. And uh, mm, let, us, let us prove this, this statement because it is, it is important and it, it clarifies many things in this bad technique. So, so, just you working on the special example or the uh, you, you may think about now we, we, we fix we fix this, uh, these relations, and we, we assume that they are true. Uh, we just uh, showed on this concrete example, which was written here. I mean, this is for the concrete example, or just not yet? We will apply it then to this concrete example. But now, it, it, it is a, 
uh, these relations are more general than, than that concre concrete so example. No, we don't know that we are working with these with these relations, uh, so we may just uh, l let me let me just write it like like this. Alpha, I put alpha of z here, and I put instead of one, I put uh, this delta i of z here. So we are working this uh, in this notation. <coughs> uh, uh, okay, now what are we going to do? So let me maybe what what can I let me just maybe put it put it here and, and uh, in order to make free uh, that part of the blackboard a a of u. Is a of u and the same for d? Uh, and c acts by zero. So let me let me write here. Uh, first of all, let us let us write each lex matrix in the split form. Like we, we'll write it like, uh, and we call it L i plus plus L i minus, and this L i plus is just uh, uh, the upper the upper part of this matrix with the diagonal. So it's it's a uh, it's this part, and and this one is just a uh, low triangular matrix which has only gamma. So it's just a very simple. Uh, split into plus and minus part. Uh, okay, n next we <coughs> we just multiply all all this. Uh, so we we can see that when we study uh, the monodromy matrix, we just multiply all these L's, ln, ln minus one, and so on up to L one. We have a product of this uh, all L's, and let us just substitute each L in this form. Just we have L n plus plus L n minus multiplied by L uh, n minus one plus plus L minus one minus, and so on up to uh, L one uh, plus plus L one. Minus, and uh, <coughs> let me let me write it like this. We will write it like t plus plus something which we call y, and this t plus consists of a product of only of only those uh, parts of L which are with plus. So this, this T plus is just L and plus, L and minus one plus, and so on, L one plus this part. And this is the rest, and this the rest of the terms. So this includes many terms. This is just one, and this includes uh, this number of terms, yes? Two in the power of n minus one. Uh, uh, why we need it? I, I want to say, I want to say that, uh, uh, so an intermediate statement is that this, uh, if we look at this operator y, it is a matrix, yes? 
Uh, so all, all these objects are matrices. And so if we look at this operator, uh, then it, it is easy to see that it acts on the vacuum vector by zero. Why it happens? This happens because this y contains contains at least at least one L K minus. And this L K minus at least one in each so it, it, it is it is a sum, yes, it is a sum of terms. It is a just a lot of terms having some just except this one. So uh, it is 2 in the power of n minus 1 terms. And each term contains at least 1 L minus. And this L minus, let me recall that this L minus is just this, this matrix. Yes, so we may just write it like 0, 0, 1, 0 multiplied by this gamma k hat. And we know uh, that uh, if we have this gamma k in this term, then then uh, there are no uh, alpha k, beta k, and delta k. So if, if we have, in, in some concrete term, if we have gamma k, then there is no uh, these operators in this term. Yes, because uh, this part goes to, to, to some other term. And it means that you may move this gamma k to the right, and it commutes with, with, with everything sitting in this concrete term. So in, 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 in some concrete term, you, ha you have some, some products of alpha, beta, gamma, delta in some, in some order many, uh, uh, many times, yes, n times. So if you have this gamma k, then, then it means that uh, this, all these alpha, beta, gamma have, have different indices, have different indices because, because in this concrete term, uh, you you take into account just L minus and L plus goes to another term. And it means that you may move this gamma K to the right. To the right because it commutes with all op with all other operators. Uh, on the other hand, we know that this gamma K is acts on the vacuum vector by zero. Yes. So uh, for each term, you have at least one gamma K uh, which you may move to the right, and then it acts to the vacuum vector by zero. So this is this is the proof of this of this result, uh, and it, it is of course important for us because uh, now <coughs> uh, now we understand that the non-zero input into the answer is provided by only plus part of all these operators. So we may not take into account a lot of terms, uh, a lot of terms from the sum. So let us, let us have a look at this T plus. Let us have a look at this T plus. Uh, let, me, let me write it more explicitly. So we, we fix this result. And now, now let us have a look at T plus. For example, uh, if we have if we have just two sides, a product of two two lux lux matrices, then what uh, what we understood is that the non-zero input into the action on the vacuum vector is generated by uh, just by this product where you may put these gammas all be equal to zero. Gamma delta two, beta two, uh, alpha two. Or maybe vice versa, I should put uh, two, two in here, one, one, one. Yes, and uh, uh, so then 
then what we have? We have uh, alpha 2, alpha 1 here. Uh, we have alpha 2, beta 1, plus uh, uh, beta 2, delta 1. We have 0 here, and we have delta 2, delta 1. So for two sides, we have already proved the statement. Why? Because we know that these deltas and these alphas act on the vacuum vector by some, uh, by some function. So the product of alpha 2 and alpha 1, for example, uh, acts on the vacuum vector by, by the product of corresponding functions. And the same for deltas. And, and this, th this one is, is equal to 0 because we have, a, we have a product of triangular matrices, and uh, the product of triangular matris matrices is again a triangular matrix. So you will uh, always have 0 here. You will always have a product, so some product of alphas here and deltas here. And here, what you will have is, some, is given by some linear combination of terms, including some betas. And these betas uh, uh, are those operators which, which turn, turn some spin. So for example, if we had, uh, if we had a vacuum of this form, then, uh, then this operator acting, uh, uh, acting on this vacuum will generate you uh, the state proportional to this vector and the state with some coefficient and the state proportional to, to, to this vector with some coefficient. So this, this operator generates you all possible linear combinations uh, uh, of, uh, of, of basis vectors of, uh, of, of your Gilbert space. And uh, uh, these operators act uh, as given here. Moreover, we may just now write down explicit expressions. Yes, so now this A of U, A of U is just a product of, of all alphas. Just a product from 1 to n. And this D of U is just a product of all Full deltas. Okay, now we <coughs> now we have have this um, have this statement, <coughs> and it is of course important that we, we we also have this this relation, which means that this uh, C operator is a kind of annihilation operator, while B is a kind of creation operator. So let us just fix it like... Um, like writing that this is a creation... creation operator and this is annihilation, yes? Now what is the bit ansatz? So you may do it uh, just, you, you may continue doing it. I mean, you may write it for n equals 3. Uh, just multiply again. And have a look at how, how if you multiply this by this, you will get again some, some here, uh, an answer like this. Delta three, delta two, delta one. Here zero, and here you will have some some linear combinations uh, of terms, including beta, uh, including beta. Okay, now, so I I, I will write now main main assumption. 
So the B times that is the following substitution. B times that uh, the following substitution. Let us look for psi <coughs> uh, be equal to uh, b of u1 and, and so on up to b of um acting on vacuum where u1 and um are some variables to be determined, to be de determined. And this is, in fact, the idea of bit and that. So uh, each, each, uh, each action of B uh, uh, generates from vacuum vector a state which has one uh, is a linear combination of terms where uh, in each term you have some uh, one, one spin uh, down. If, if, if you had in the vacuum all spins up, then B provides you one spin down. And if you put uh, M times uh, operator B, then you will have, so this, this corresponds to corresponds to M spins down and N minus M spins up. So this is a kind of quantum number. Uh, it, it's a preserved quantity. We are looking uh, to some sector of Hilbert space where M spins are down and N minus M spins are up. And in this sector, we are looking for, uh, we are looking for solution in this form. And uh, <coughs> let, us, let us try to, uh, so let us formulate how we, how we are going to, to, uh, to find the solution and how we are going to determine all, uh, these parameters, which are in fact called beta roots. So these are called beta, beta roots. But they will be in fact beta roots after, after some restrictions. And this is just... Uh, so uh, so what, what are we going to do? We are going to act on this psi by the transfer matrix. E of u plus d of u should act on this psi. And now <coughs> this psi this psi is equal to the product of uh, these operators b. b uh, of u1, b of um. So in order to compute it, you need to move this A and D to the right. So you may, you, you need to, to use some commutation relations and uh, move this A and D to the right. And uh, when, when you, uh, so when you finish and when A com comes to, to, to the last place before the vacuum vector, then you may use this, these relations. But when, when moving to the right, you will, of course, have some additional terms, depending on what commutation relations you have. Uh, and for this reason, we need to, now we need to, to specify somehow commutation relations. So now we, uh, so let, let us write, our R matrix in, in the concrete case again. But so we'll, in what follows, we will use again some general 
general notations uh, because they include not only this concrete case, but however it is, it is, it is uh, maybe very useful to, to look at concrete examples. So let, let us uh, write this R matrix, <coughs> which was 1 uh, plus H Z minus W multiplied by permutation. Uh, so we, we had like identity matrix plus H Z minus W, and here we had uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and three zeros and 1. So, uh, and let us denote it. So we see that this, uh, these are matrix, and this is just a, an identity matrix. And we see that we have six, six non-zero components. So this R matrix is the, the so-called six vertex R matrix. And let us write it in the following way, in the, for, in the following general way. We'll put it like F what? Uh, F or F dependent on Z and W, uh, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1. Uh, here we put G of Z and W, 0, 0. Now again, G, G of Z, W, again 1. And here we have this again F. Uh, F zero zero zero. So let us let us write our matrix in this in this form. In this concrete case, in this concrete case, this these functions uh, are this function G is just H divided by difference, and this F is uh, is uh, Z minus W plus H divided by Z minus W. Uh, so yes, because uh, F is standing here and here. So uh, and, uh, this term uh, is, uh, you have this term plus one. Uh, in these positions, you have ones here, and you have, again, this ratio here and here. So in here and here we have G. Okay, now we we have this R matrix and we want to know commutation relations uh, because we know that this uh, this R matrix defines uh, defines commutation relations for uh, for the components of monotony matrix for this A B C D. Just let me write it like, like this. We have this T1 of W, T1 of Z, T2 of W, R12 of ZWH and so we have this RTT relation, and again we know, as as in the example with the with the with the quantization of group uh, SL2 last time, we just write explicitly. We may write this T of uh, of Z uh, just very very precisely. Just if if T is A B C D, yes, then then this is just. A of Z, 0, 0, A of Z. Here we have B of Z, 0, 0, B of Z, and so on. Here C of Z, C of Z, 0, 0, and so on. Uh, and here D of Z. And for T2, T2 of W, we have just 
matrix which consists of A of W, D of W, C of W, D of W. Here we have zeros, and here we have again this matrix A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. So we have all, the, all this, uh, all objects in these equations are, are, are very explicit. So we have T1, T2, and these are matrix. All of them are just matrices four by four. And these two matrices are operator valid. And this matrix contains some, so, some concrete functions at some places. And so you may just easily calculate the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and write, and write down equations, so quantum relations or, commuta or commutation relations. Uh, and so I, I won't write down all of them, but only those which we need. But let me just uh, uh, just mention that uh, one of uh, one of relations is that each matrix element of the monodromy matrix commutes with itself depending on different value of spectral parameter. So it means that uh, it means that, for example, a of u commutes with a of u prime. Uh, and the same for B, and the same for all others. And this is, this is important, in fact, for us. Uh, why it is important? Because uh, now we know that we may move these Bs in different orders. So th there is <coughs> uh, the, the order of, this, uh, of these variables is not fixed. You may move them to the left or to the right. It doesn't matter. They commute with each other. So, but this, uh, this is a just kind of trivial part of these relations. And there are, of course, some non-trivial uh, non relations, quadratic relations, which includes these functions f and g. And let me write one of them, which we need. <coughs> so let me write one of these relations. Uh, one of these relations is as follows. A of V, D of U is equal to F of uh, UV, F of UV, uh, then B, B of U, uh, A of V plus the function G depending on v and u. Here uh, it depends on u and v, and here it depends on v and u. Uh, and here we have b of v, a of u. So u and v are just uh, z and w in that, uh, in this relation. So, okay, we have this this relation, and this is what we what we need in order to to move these these operators A, for example. If we uh, first let, let us look at, at the action of operator A. So what we have, we have this operator A acting on B of u1 and so on B of u n. This 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 is our substitution for psi. And we act by, by this operator A. Uh, <coughs> uh, just let us consider uh, uh, a very concrete and simple example. Uh, let us consider the case when, when we have just, uh, just a single site. Uh, not, not just a single site, but uh, we consider the case when uh, we have only one spin down. So, yes, so uh, the simplest excitation. So, uh, for example, let us consider when we, when we have just just uh, uh, one parameter u. Then the action of a on this b is the following. 
let us write it explicitly. We just we just substitute what, what we have here. So our v is equal to u and u is equal to u1 in this notation, yes? So this, this, this provides us with the following answer. Uh, we have uh, this, and then, and then uh, okay, let, let us write it like f of, uh, maybe f of, maybe it's better to put it, let us put it that here just uh, maybe it is, uh, it is bad because there are a lot of u's here. So we have here z and z here. And then what is, uh, what is here? f of u1 z, uh, b of u1 uh, a of z plus g of v is equal to z, and u here is equal to u1, yes, u1. And uh, <coughs> um, to u1, and here we have also uh, b, b of z, b of z, a of u1. Yes, and all this, all this expression acts on the vacuum. So now we have this A's uh, standing to the right, and we may just write down the answer. Uh, and the answer is as follows. When this A of Z acts on the, on the vacuum vector, we have uh, this coefficient A small of Z, which, which is this one, yes? We use these relations. <coughs> we are looking for the first term now. This A uh, hat acts on the vacuum vector by multiplying it by uh, this function. And we also ha have here this function phi f of u1z. And we also have this B uh, of u1 applied to vacuum. And the second term, the second term, uh, uh, is as follows. We have uh, A of u1, yes, A of u1, then multiplied by G of Z of u1, and finally we have this uh, B of Z acting on the convector. What we see, we want to uh, uh, we want to obtain, as a result of this action, we want to obtain uh, the, original, the original vector, yes? We, because we, we are looking for eigenvalue problem. We are looking for the, the stationary Schrodinger equation. So if we had uh, originally this psi in this form, then we are expecting that uh, after, the, after action by A plus D, or separately by A and separately by D, We'll, we'll obtain something, something like this vector multiplied by something, by some expression. And we have this, uh, we have this term. This is, this is a correct term. Yes, it, it is exactly psi for this m equals 1 case. Yes, uh, this, is, this is original psi. But this is not, because, uh, because our psi was was defined as, as uh, b of u, and this is b of some z. So we, we call this term unwanted term. Unwanted term. And now our strategy will be as follows. We, we will look, uh, uh, we'll look to the action of the operators a and d to this expression, and we will use these computation relations, and we will find some condition uh, for all unwanted terms to vanish. So we'll write in some general form all these unwanted terms, uh, then we will sum up them and look at, the, um, at this restriction or at this condition uh, for all unwanted terms uh, uh, to, to be cancelled out. 
And uh, so this is this is main idea, in fact, underlying the bit and thus method. We just uh, what we saw. Just let me repeat it again. What we saw that this the action of this B uh, is a kind of creation operator. It turns one spin uh, from up to down. Uh, and if we apply M operators, then we have then we have M turned spins. So we, we consider this state, yes, and, C, and the operator C is an annihilation operator, and this is creation. So we created some, some states with M spins up, uh, with M spins down. Uh, and now we, uh, we act uh, on this space by the operators A and D, uh, which are just uh, uh, the operators entering transfer matrix. Our transfer matrix is A plus D. And now we, we, we see that there are some correct terms in the right-hand side, and there are some unwanted terms. And let us now <coughs> formulate it uh, in, the, in the general case. So this is just was the simplest example when M is equal to 1, and let us now formulate uh, the result when, when M, M uh, sum is arbitrary number. Uh, let us do it, and then we'll, we'll see what, what is the answer. Uh, so uh, maybe okay, maybe just to uh, it is more illustrative if we consider uh, if we consider one more example when m is equal to two. Yes. So we, we consider just the simplest case when m is equal to one, and then we have just one b, and we applied this. Uh, this commutation relation just one time. And uh, let us have a look what happens if we have two, uh, 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 two operators B, so that there are two excitations in, in, in this beta state. So what, what happens in this case, just let us write it. Uh, in this case, we have this psi. This psi is equal to B of U1, uh, B of U, Two, acting on the vacuum. And now let us apply uh, this operator A of Z to, to it. So it's just uh, A of Z, uh, B of U1, B of U2, uh, acting on vacuum. Um, okay, now, first of all, we, uh, we apply this commutation relation one time for, for this pair, yes? And we just, what we should write here? Uh, we should write here the following thing. Uh, we should write this uh, f of u1 z b of u1 a of z b of u2 yes uh, plus g of z u1 b of z this is a th th this is what we called unwanted term in the previous example <coughs> a of u1 b of uh, u2 and uh, all this is mul uh, applied to to vacuum but uh, in order to apply it to vacuum we need again to again apply uh, this commutation relations just to move a to, 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 to the right position. So we need to apply it again for, this, for these two expressions. Uh, what we have, 
uh, let us write it again. So we have here f of u1 z uh, b of u. I am writing now this, this first term first, yes. Um, so we have this b of u1. And this is, this is simplified through, through that relation. <coughs> uh, uh, maybe not simplified, but, but transformed. Uh, f, f of uh, u2z uh, b of u2a of, um, of z plus, plus uh, g of z of u2 multiplied by b of z a of uh, u2. Uh, this is the first term. And the, sec the second one is uh, uh, plus g. So we, uh, we are now looking for, for this term where, uh, where we uh, transform this product by that relation. <coughs> so we have this, uh, this common factor. Uh, we have also this b of z. And in the brackets we have, uh, we have something which is standing here, which can be written, let us, okay, let us write it. f of uh, u2, u1. Uh, f of u2, u1. b of u2, uh, a of u1. Plus g of u1, u2. b of u1, a of u2. That's all. So we have these four terms. We have these four terms. <coughs> and uh, what, what can be simplified here? So let, let us look what, what we obtained. First of all, uh, we'll look at this, at this term. So, and all this acts, all this acts on, on the vacuum. Yeah, so let us look at this one. This is, this is the one which we need, yes, because it acts. Now we have this operator A standing to the right, and it acts uh, by multiplication with that function A small of z. And this B of u1 and B of u2 are exactly the operators uh, which we use to construct solution, to, to construct on that. So this, uh, this is a good term. Uh, but all, all other terms are not good. All other terms are unwanted. And we may simplify it. <coughs> In fact, uh, we have this, uh, for example, b, b of z. Uh, yes, we have, you, you see, we have this. Uh, b of z here and b, b of u2 here. Uh, and we have uh, uh, a of u2. And now, and yes, uh, b of u2, not, not maybe. Um, Now we have this b of z and this b of u1 uh, uh, and this b of u1 and b of z. Yes, uh, and they commute with each other because we know this property that uh, the operators commute uh, at different points. So then we, we may unify to these terms. Let me, let me write it, uh, what we have. So uh, first of all, we have the wanted term. The wanted term has has the following uh, uh, 
is as follows. It, it is just a product of these f functions. <coughs> then it has this, the correct product of, of B operators. Uh, and this A of Z, which acts, uh, which acts just by, by, by function A small. This is a good term. This is wanted. Wanted. Then we also have uh, the term with B2, B of U2, uh, this one. Uh, let me write it separately. It is just G of Z of U1, uh, F of U2, U1. Uh, yes, the, yes, it's correct. Uh, B of Z, uh, B of U2, uh, and A of U1. And finally, we have these two, these two terms, which are, uh, which are unified. Uh, so that in the brackets, we have this uh, uh, sum of functions. plus g of z of uh, u1 and uh, g of u1, u2. And now it is all multiplied by, multiplied by b of z, uh, b of uh, u1, uh, a of u2. So this is the answer, it, and this is the answer just for m equals 2, and it took some time for us to write it, yes? Uh, so uh, it's, not a, it's not a simple task just to write, uh, to write explicit expression in the, in the arbitrary case. Yes, and in, in fact, these functions, if you look at these functions, then you may, you may verify that all this expression in the bracket is in fact equal to g of z u2. It, it, it is a kind of identity. But you may verify that the following identity holds true. This, the, the sum of these uh, two terms is represented as, as a product of these two terms. So, and in this way, it becomes a very similar to what we have here. Yes, because uh, these terms uh, differ from this one is just by changing u1 to u2. Yes, we have u2 here and u1 here, and vice versa. Here we have u2 and u1, and b of z is, ten is standing to the left. And uh, this is why it is uh, it is correct uh, that we have this uh, relation because this coefficient is also differs from this one just by changing u1 to u2 by interchanging u1 and u2. Uh, OK, <coughs> uh, so uh, we see that there is a problem. Because so uh, we have co quite complicated, uh, technically complicated uh, calculation, uh, even in the case when there are two excited states. And what about an arbitrary number of excitations? Now, we should, we should look at it in a, in, a, in a different way in order to solve this problem. So, so our problem, let me say it again, that when we act, uh, so if we have the, uh, some arbitrary m, and our psi is just a product of all these b's, then uh, we consider this a applied to psi, then you should move, so we have this a, b, 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 then, e, so first when we apply uh, this commutation relation, we have two terms, two terms, then, uh, the yes, then, then we, after, uh, after one application of this relation, we obtain some expressions of this type, two expressions of this type. 
Then we apply it again by moving again to the right. Now uh, we have twice more terms, so we have four terms. And then B, B, A, and then again all Bs, and so on. So uh, finally we have this number of terms. And what we, sh what we should do with it? Uh, and we, we want to, uh, to have some, some finite and clear expression for, for as a result of the action. Uh, and le let me show how, how it can be done. This can be done, in, in fact, in the following way. Uh, uh, we, uh, we use two main properties, in fact. We use two main properties. Uh, two, two properties. The first property is that this, these operators B commute with each other, uh, B taken at, di at different values of Z and W. So, as I told you previously, you may, you may move this B to and change change the order. This is one important property, and another important property is a kind of uh, conservation, conservation of arguments. Conservation of arguments, just let me write it like this. Conservation of arguments means that when you apply the commutation relations, if, if you have this V and U, then in the right hand side, U again has U and V, and V and U, yes? So if you, if you consider expression of, of this type, so you have A of Z applied to B of U1, B of UM, then, then what, what and, and, and all this is applied to, to vacuum. Uh, then what, what can you have in the right hand side? You may have only expressions of where you have one A, one A, and many times B, yes? Uh, so w when you move all, when you do all permutations and move A to the right, so what you may have? Uh, 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 according to this conservation of arguments, you may have, let me just write the answer and then I, then I explain you what I mean. <coughs> so I want to say that uh, this expression is, uh, is represented in some, in some way. Acting on psi, uh, where psi I I I is just this psi. Yes, so this is a wanted term, and all unwanted terms, all unwanted terms, can be written in this form. It is a sum of a of u k set of u's. Uh, B of Z, a product of G not equal to K, B of U, G. So this, in, in some way, it, it, is, it is an obvious answer, yes, because uh, originally we have, uh, originally we have this expression. Then we begin to move this A to the right. And uh, uh, e even then, we achieved some. So what happens each time when we move it to the right? We have again some m numbers of b and one a, but uh, arguments change somehow uh, in these operators. They change somehow uh, and multiplied by some some set of functions. So what what we may have as a final result? After all, uh, commutation relations. We may have, of course, this 
B of U1, the, the, this is a, the, co the correct term, the wanted term. We may have it like this. And this corresponds to this, uh, to this term and this sum. Yeah, so we, we have this A of Z uh, coming from the action of this A. And uh, uh, after some commutation relations, we also have some, some coefficient function also, which was a product of, in fact, a product of uh, functions f in, in, that, in the previous example with m equals 2. Uh, this is the first possibility, yes. And the second possibility is that uh, z, uh, so that, that, that you have the same, the same expression, but instead of z, you have some, for example, u1. Uh, if you have here u1, then it means that 1 of b should, be, should go through z, because uh, they just interchanged while applying some commutation relations. And the rest of b's are coming with the rest of u's, b of u2 up to b of um. And there is no, there is no uh, difference in, in which order they are standing because they commute with each other. Uh, third possibility is that this, we have B, for example, A of U2, and then we have uh, B of Z, B of U1, and there is no U2 because U2 come, uh, uh, u2 is here, and then we have b of u3, and, and so on, up to b of um. And so all these terms are unwanted. Unwanted. But what is, what is, uh, uh, what is very important, our rules, uh, so we use these properties that b, two b operators commute with each other at, diff uh, at different points. And, and due to also the conservation of arguments, uh, the, uh, they just interchange somehow wh when using commutation relations, allowed us to write down the answer uh, where it has just m plus 1 terms. N n not this number of terms, but just m plus 1 instead. This is, this is very important, and this, this allows, in fact, to, to formulate the final answer. And moreover, we may compute we may compute all these coefficients because, uh, in fact, it is clear uh, how these coefficients appear. So, if uh, if our uh, operator A uh, finally depends on Z, then it means that while mo moving through all uh, commutation relations while moving, uh, moving to, 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 to the right, uh, we, uh, we used for this term, we used only, only this term from commutation relations. Yes, because here, here we have A of V and here we have A of V. And there is no other possibility, you see? So this, this, this is why, this is why we, we not just uh, put a general form for the answer, but we, we, may all, we can all, uh, uh, even more, we can compute all the coefficients which are standing here, this and this. And then let me write, let me write these coefficients. Uh, these coefficients are the following. Just a second. These coefficients are are the following. This, uh, we have this uh, lambda of z of all u's. Uh, this is equal to just a <coughs> it is equal to, to all products of function f. Yes, f of u g z. Because the only way to obtain the correct term, the wanted term, is to use this part of commutation relations. So each time we move a to the right through 
uh, through one B and another and another, we, every time we use only this, this part of commutation relation. And this is why for this term, for this lambda, we have a, just a product of this functions f. This is what is written here. And uh, for example, if we, if we look at this term now, uh, what we have here? Here we have uh, a situation when uh, this spectral parameter z comes into b, uh, uh, and a now depends on uk. So one time we, uh, so we, uh, one time we used this commutation relations in, instead of this one. And uh, it, means, it, it means that this lambda k of z of u is equal to, so one time we use this incorrect uh, change of uh, arguments between z and uk, and all other times uh, we use the correct one. So, and all other times we use this f, and this is why we have this, uh, uh, this expression. <coughs> uh, and so, so we have this, uh, this final answer for the action of A uh, to this. Uh, to th uh, this, is, this is what is called bit, bit vector. But it is off-shell, what is called off-shell. Off-shell. Uh, and it will be on-shell when we uh, impose constraints on this use, uh, such that the unwanted term uh, will vanish. Uh, but uh, in order to formulate uh, this, uh, this condition, we also need to, uh, to write down a similar, form, uh, similar form, formula for the action of operator D. And in fact, it, uh, it may be, it, it, it can be done in the same way, absolutely in the same way. Let me just write the answer here. Uh, so the logic is just almost the same. And what we have is as follows. So the action of operator D of Z on the product of B of U1, B of UM, and the application to the vacuum vector is equal to, um, let me write it like D of Z lambda with tilde of Z U acting on Psi, this is again correct term, well, like this one, and plus unwanted terms, plus the sum of M unwanted terms from K to M, the sum goes, and here we have D of UK, and uh, this is a lambda tilde K Z of of U, this is lambda K. Uh, and uh, we have here the wrong, uh, wrong arguments for B, B of Z, and uh, a product of B of U, but for only for B uh, of UL, and L is not equal to K. This is it. And explicit expressions are again known for, for these lambda tildes, for these coefficient functions, because in fact we know, uh, in fact we know there's a, the, the similar relation, let me, let me write the similar relation D of Z, uh, B of U for the operator D. It is just F of uh, Z U. Uh, B of U, D of Z, uh, plus G of U, Z, D of Z, 
geofew. So you see that it's uh, absolutely similar. The only difference is that uh, this function uh, has different order of arguments. So this is this is the only uh, and uh, uh, yes and, uh, and this one also. So uh, the difference is just in in the. Uh, in changing order of arguments in that uh, structure functions, f and g. <coughs> uh, but, uh, so this is why we have for lambda uh, tilde uh, the following answer. It is just a product again of all functions f, uh, of all functions f, but now the arguments are changed. Here we have u, z, and now we have z, u. And similarly for these coefficient functions, lambda tilde k of z of all u's, uh, we have, uh, uh, again, the same expression where, where we just change the order of, uh, the order of arguments. So g of u, k, z, and the product of uh, g not equal to k, f of u, k, u, g. So now finally, we, we need to consider the sum of these expressions. And uh, as a result, as a result, As a result, we obtain a correct term, which comes from the sum of this one and this one, yes? They, 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 they will give you a correct, so a plus d, a of z plus d of z, acting on this beta vector, uh, gives us a correct, a correct term, which is just, uh, let me write it like a, this a, uh, I just rewrite this expression, lambda of z u uh, plus d of z lambda tilde of z u uh, applied to psi. This is a correct term, and uncorrect term includes uh, uh, is represented as a sum as a sum of the sum of this this expression and this expression multiplied by this uh, by these uh, incorrect operators incorrect uh, so operators with incorrect arguments uh, a of u uh, a of u k lambda k uh, of ZU plus D of UK, uh, lambda tilde K of uh, ZU. And all this is multiplied by B of Z and the product of all B's except the case one. And it is applied to vacuum. So <clears throat> now we, the sufficient condition for, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for our ansatz to be true is that all these expressions vanish. All these expressions vanish. And so this is our restriction, this is our condition. And this condition is called beta equations. So we, we just require all these brackets to be zero. And if it is true, if it is true, then, <coughs> then, we, uh, then we have, then we have solution. So, and what happens here? I want to say that this, you see this lambda k, uh, uh, I just, I just removed it, but uh, let me, 
uh, let me let me recall you that this lambda k uh, so let me write it like like a separate uh, set of equations so we require that a of u k lambda k plus d of u k uh, lambda k tilde this all uh, uh, is uh, this is of z u and this is of z u this should be equal to zero for any k this is what we require yes for any k from 1 to m. And now I want to say uh, that this lambda k, if, if, you, if you look at your notes, then you'll see that this lambda k, uh, lambda k, uh, k of z u, uh, has uh, this function uh, g of z u k and some product of, of function of phi of u's. And similarly in the uh, for this lambda tildes we have this g of u k of z and the product of this function f. And now recall that this g is just this function. And so if you have g of z of uk is equal to minus uh, g of ukz. So it, 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 they are equal to each other with, the, uh, with only minus sign. And this is why this, uh, uh, this function g are cancelled out from these equations. And these equations become to be independent of z. And this is this is very very much important thing. Because what we have now, we have a set of equations, which is a set of equations for these parameters u only. Uh, they don't depend on the spectral parameter. And this is what we wanted to have. Because our vector psi should be independent of spectral parameter. So finally, we have we have a set of equations, let me write them, and we will uh, finish w uh, for today. Uh, finally, finally, we have uh, the following equations. A of uk multiplied by uh, j not equal to k, f of u g u k should be equal, so we, we just uh, we just require that this is zero, yes? And then we cancel these two functions g, uh, but one, so they, they differ by, by a sign. This is why we have uh, uh, one term in the left-hand side and another in the right-hand side. Uh, now, this is equal to d of uk multiplied by p of g not equal to k. Then f of u k u g, or what is just just the same. It, it, it is often written in, in the form like this: f of u k u g divided by f of u j u k. And k goes from one to n, and this is the equations equations and solutions are beta roots solutions are beta roots and so this is a victory uh, this is a victory because now uh, what we have uh, uh, we know these functions f and g, they're just structure functions uh, uh, entering our matrices, our matrix. And we may just uh, uh, find solution in this form, look for solution in this form. And what we know, that we just should write this set of equations, 
It may be uh, this the, the set of equations can be quite complicated, but, but we can use computers uh, just to solve the set of, of equations. Uh, and using computer, we find solutions of these equations and then substitute it back here. And what we have is uh, just a solution of quantum, of quantum problem. And this is main idea and main formulation of algebraic bit ansatz.